Welcome to the quick hitter version of Bucket Boys and Blocks, along with my amazing co-host, Mark Lynette. I'm King McClure. This week, our feature discussion is with Draymond Green. Was he tripping or was he not? But not just from a player's perspective, we have a front office person, David Wall, who has his own show on Pure Hoops Media. Check it out. Does Draymond have a point? Oh, I think he's, I think he's hit the nail on the head. I mean, it's clearly, uh, to me, it's a, it's a black and white issue sprinkled with some shades of gray in between, but it's clearly a double standard. Um, what usually happens when a team talks about trading a player, the team is seen kind of as the good guy. Well, we're doing it to make the team better. We're doing it to win more games. We're doing it to, you know, in the best interests of the team. However, when a player asks to be traded, He's seen as the bad guy. He's ruining the chemistry of the team. He's he's not living up to um, why they brought him here. You know, he's 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 the guy that's letting his teammates down. So right away, there's these two sides to it. But one guy, the player, is seen as the bad guy, and the team is seen as doing the right thing, the good thing. And it's it's been that way for for a long, long time. And I think uh, Draymond just exposed the. The reasons why it's totally unfair to to have it continue this way. So when I, when I hear Draymond and I hear his thoughts, now I kind of view it as like almost a two part issue. I mean, when he says people like the players are castrated and they're made to look at such bad people, do you think that's more so management or do you think that's the media? Um, I, I think I think the media definitely plays a part in it because look, we all know and, and you guys know it's it's 24/7, 365 with the media. Um, and and it's not just like one voice of the media. There's all voices cascading in on how they view it, and they all have their biases towards it. Um, but but again, the the team always kind of is able to put it as we're doing the right thing for the team. It's a it's a larger thing we're we're, we're shaping here, where the player is almost like, oh, you're not happy with your deal. You're not happy here. You're being selfish, and and so I, I do think it becomes those two extremes. The, the shades of gray I was talking about is, okay, let's say you're a team and you've decided in this instance, you're going to sit Andre Drummond. You're not gonna play Andre, okay? Because you feel Jared Allen's gonna be a better player. Is this something that Andre had any voice in? Like when he sat down, did they offer him to uh, be able to play reduced minutes? Or did he, did he take the path of, I'd rather not play at all if I'm gonna play reduced minutes? I mean, what did the player, like what, what voice did he have in this decision? Because clearly a team could just say, hey, we're not going to play you anymore. And so the, the shades of gray sometimes are like, okay, was this a mutual decision once the team decided this was the path they wanted to go? Because a player, really, once you sign your contract, the team has the power over your minutes, the style of play a coach is going to play you, and a number of other things. That's just inherent in the contract. The only thing they really are supposed to do is pay you on time and treat you respectfully and and you know, try and build a good team. Okay, Dave. So I guess for me, it begs the question, is there a solution? I, I think it's really hard because even if, even if the team, let's say the team wasn't allowed to um, say they were going to sit a player to trade them. Okay. You and I both know that as soon as that player is sitting down anyway, and he's not dressed, <laughs> the media is going to come in and ask a million questions of Andre or the team they're eventually going to have to say, yeah, we're, we're sitting them so we can trade them. So it gets to that issue very quickly. Um, I, I don't know what the, the answer is because players have much more power now. And, and I see that as a good thing. You, you earn it. If, if you've got the power because you're an elite player and you're stuck on a bad team or a team that's going to be rebuilding and you're at a phase in your career where you don't want to deal with rebuilding, maybe you've been there for a couple of years, and you're trying to use your power to get somewhere else. I don't. I don't think that's a bad thing. It happens in society every day, in other jobs and other professions. But I don't know that there's an easy way to take the stigma off when a player asks for it, as opposed to how a team does it. But I don't think. I don't think a team should be allowed to say, you know, um, the things that a player can't say. Like if a player wants to mm -hmm. ask for a trade, there shouldn't be a fine involved or something. Something like that. If you'd like to hear more from Dave Wall, check out the full version of Buckets, Boards, and Blocks from Pure Hoops Media. You also can watch the show on our YouTube page.